Under historicity, the Gospels have their origins in eyewitness accounts of an earthly Jesus that were later rearranged, dramatised and mythologised. Under mythicism, no such eyewitness accounts existed and the Gospels were derived entirely from sources such as the Jewish scriptures and other ancient literature, as well as contemporary mythological motifs and the writings of Paul or derivations thereof. The four Gospels are an important part of the case for historicity. The argument centres on establishing that their sources were independent of each other. Historicists concede that the Gospels are not fully independent of each other and most concede that we don't know who wrote them nor the dates they were written. But the general consensus is that Mark was written first around 70 AD. Mark was used extensively by both Matthew and Luke but there are components of both of these Gospels that do not depend on Mark. Some of these non-Markian components are common to both Matthew and Luke and this led to the theory of the Q source, a hypothetical early Gospel that has now been lost but which was available to the writers of Matthew and Luke. Matthew and Luke are both generally dated between 80 and 90 AD, so if the Q-source theory is true, then at this time the writers of these two Gospels had access to Mark, Q and possibly other sources as well. Some stories are only found in Luke, like the Prodigal Son and the Good Samaritan. For this reason, another so-called L-source has been proposed. Furthermore, in his opening lines, Luke refers to many previous attempts to compile a narrative of Jesus' life. No doubt one of these was Mark, but Luke implies many others. Matthew also has some stories that are unique to his Gospel. His infancy narrative is found nowhere else for one thing, giving rise to the hypothetical M source. John's Gospel is generally regarded as the latest, being written between 90 and 100 AD. It has little in common with the other three, most of its content being unique to John. This suggests that John had access to at least one other source. There are stories found in John that are also found in the other Gospels, but they are told in different ways, suggesting that John had other sources. Scholars have proposed that there was a signs source describing Jesus' miracles, as well as more than one other source of Jesus' speeches called the discourse sources. With Q, L and M, this brings the total to more than six. The Gospel of Thomas is a non-canonical work that was discovered in 1945. It is a collection of sayings of Jesus dated to around 120 AD. Only about half of the Gospel of Thomas overlaps with the other four Gospels, suggesting that it serves as, or had, a seventh independent source. In fact, scholar April de Cornick has argued that it depends on a source that goes back as far as 50 AD. There are also other non-canonical Gospels, such as Peter, which only survives in part, and gives an account of Jesus' trial, crucifixion and resurrection. This brings the number of independent sources to over eight. A further one is the Edgerton Gospel, dated from the end of the 2nd century. It amounts to a few papyrus fragments from what appears to have been another Gospel. It includes four stories about Jesus, three of them recognisable from the canonical Gospels, and a fourth one that involved Jesus planting seeds that grew into a tree that bore fruit before onlookers' eyes. Then there are the Gnostic Gospels, of which over 40 have survived, at least in part. Many of them are historicised rather than being purely mythical. So traces of multiple sources can be discerned in the Gospels, and it appears that at least some of them can be dated from as early as within 20 years of Jesus' supposed death. But if such sources did exist, then where did they get their information? One possibility is that eyewitnesses wrote down what they saw, but given the very low levels of literacy at the time, and the prominence of Christianity among poor and uneducated classes, this would seem unlikely. The main scholarly view is that the stories of Jesus initially circulated in oral tradition before they were written down. The multiplicity of sources, and the wide variety of different stories they contain, would suggest that many stories were circulating via oral tradition before their canonical Gospels were written. A key part of the historicist's argument is that such circulating oral traditions are easily explained as stories about a real Jesus, but more difficult to explain as stories about a Jesus who was invented at a later date. A further argument concerns language. The Gospels were written in Greek, but the language of Palestine at the time was Aramaic. There are some traces in the Gospels of Aramaic suggesting that the stories may have originated in oral tradition. For example, in Mark's account of raising Jairus' daughter, Jesus says, Talitha kum, which is Aramaic. Mark translates this for his readers as, Little girl, I say to you, get up. Similarly, when Mark recounts Jesus' words from the cross, he uses Aramaic. There are also examples of John using Aramaic words and translating them, such as a rabbi meaning teacher, Messiah meaning Christ, and Cephas meaning Peter. Further evidence of translation from Aramaic is found in Mark 2, verse 27 to 28. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. 
so the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. This doesn't make sense as it stands, but in Aramaic the same word is used for man and son of man. So the original in Aramaic would be Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Therefore man is Lord of the Sabbath, which does make sense. Suggesting that Mark's rendering was a clumsy Greek translation of an Aramaic original. So the historicists make a strong case that gospel writers use multiple sources, and this case is substantiated by the onomastic argument, all of which points towards there being a historical Jesus. I'll turn to how the mythicists deal with this in their interpretation of the Gospels in the next video.